subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Okay, this is what it is. Yes, we are. We have to calculate MTC by by first of all changing our approach and how to like take AMT. AMT for the purpose of sorry AMTI for the purpose of MTC is different. We saw that we have to take only those items that result in deferral. We have to take only those items that result in deferral and and not take the exclusion item. Okay, and this is how we come up to that our uh, the liability with exclusion is eight thousand five hundred. So without exclusion, we saw yesterday it's going to be so and so. This is the credit that can be taken forward. So now the answer that I was expecting the question: How to calculate MTC? You need to say that there is a different approach to calculate what is going to be MTC. We cannot go with the AMT. AMT is not equal to MTC, so we have to go with only deferral items. We compute, see what is that number. That number will be considered for the purpose of carry forwards. And in the subsequent years, if there is a difference between regular tax liability and minimum tax liability, meaning if regular tax liability is higher than minimum tax liability, then the difference needs to be refunded back to the taxpayer. So that and this is how those credits can be used so instead of paying 45000 the person will pay only 42000 because he has a credit sitting in his account for 10500 and then this credit gets reduced by 3000 in the again in following years we will have to see what can be used and what can be taken forward so the good part is that this is all calculated on the software if you're rolling forward the file, we already have the previous data and all these all adjustment, what are tax deferred items, what are exclusion items, everything has been calculated there. Okay. So let's start with our next topic, 7.3 other taxes. So now we're going to focus on what are other taxes. AMT is minimum taxes. Okay, that is that is a different, it's not a kind of tax. It's just something that IRS wants you to the IRS wants the taxpayer to pay on the minimum side and that's why they call it AMT. It's part of income tax only if you want to put it that way. But there are certain other taxes that the taxpayer has to pay. What are those? There's something called FICA. This is a very commonly used term. You will say that, oh, what is the FICA taxes? How much is FICA? So you should always think that FICA relates to social security. Whenever we are running the payroll, and this is something that can be explained very well by our payroll team. What are the employment taxes? Whenever we are running a payroll, there's certain portion of FICA taxes or social security, FICA slash social security stands for the same thing. Okay, same thing. Don't get confused. What is FICA and what is social security? It's the same thing. This is just coming out of Federal Insurance Contribution Act. There's a different act which has been, uh, which dictates what should be the social security and what are the rules to withhold it and all. But this is very commonly used term, FICA taxes. Exactly. So we have to see what is social security tax. This is a mandatory tax. It's not an income tax. It's part of payroll taxes. Whenever the payroll has been run, approximately 6.2% of the gross the gross payroll has to be computed towards social security taxes and this is something the employee pays as well as the employer pays employee will obviously pay out of the gross payroll so after those all those withholdings and all they will get something which is we call net payroll the employer also has to pay the same taxes if they are running the payroll to the government and they are also paying exact same amount. They are also paying 6.2%. The Social Security now, as the term says, this is this kind of tax has been levied in order for the uh, Social Security Administration or for US government to collect funds which can be distributed as person retire or in their old age or if they get disabled 
or or something some other kind of some death happens in the family something else happens okay so these are the wages paid for old age survivors and disability insurance o a s d i old age survivors disability insurance so that's called social security taxes this is mandatory there is no say in that there is nobody can say well i don't want to pay anything it's fine i'll take care of my own retirement we don't want government to take care of it no you cannot say like that this is mandatory taxes and if you've been reading in the newspapers and all like the us economy it's going through so much um, you know so much of debt and the gdp um, is not enough to like i mean the, the the debt ratio to gdp ratio has been really going uh, you know quite out of the reach now and it's it's really it's not in a very good shape so what that the news keeps coming that we are not sure if so if us government will be able to keep their promises of paying social security uh, you know distributions as people retire we don't know what that will happen after 15 20 years people right now they are all paying the government for social security medicare and all but actually speaking you know those are all the kind of uh, speculations going on the way us economy is going as they are like taking loans after loans and again taking loans to just pay the interest and all those things so we'll have to see what happens so you will also see a lot of clients coming and saying well i'm paying so much of social security i'm not sure whether i'll get anything back or not this is a very commonly said statement we'll have to see what how things uh, you know unfold after few years so this is part of payroll tax now another thing is 1.45% is paid towards hospital insurance again very commonly called medicare taxes this is again mandatory taxes okay and this has to be paid by both employer and employee the difference between uh, social and medicare is there is a limit on social security taxes so after the certain limit which is like 147000 for year 2022 again this limit keeps changing all the thresholds will keep changing every year so don't get stuck to stuck to that but you at least we need to have an idea when we see w2 that w2 income if it's $500000 but social security is giving only 147000 in its social security wages box why is that because there is a limit there is no limit on medicare so you will not see a reduce amount in the medicare uh, wages okay and if you see that like social security is 250000 you we should immediately look into it see how can that happen there is a limit on that okay, so those are the kind of things we need to be vigilant about so again if uh, there might be some if the person is working for multiple employers and all the the, the subsequent employer may not know what does previous employer has been the part of social security and all so they may result it may result into withholding extra taxes which is fine because at the time of filing their tax return they can always get a refund for that so contribution made by employees are not tax deductible we cannot take that as a deduction it just goes out but obviously if the employer pays some taxes it can be part of payroll taxes and in their profit and loss they can take a deduction for that okay this is what it is saying and over withholding is taken as a credit against the income tax if the over withholding results from multiple employer withholding and this is again very very common situation right the the second employer he can always the second employer the company can always request the employee to tell them whether social security wages have been reached to the limit or not but if the employee says i don't want to share my pay stub like they cannot do anything so what they're going to assume that fine we'll just start withholding taxes again there's no such rule that they have to produce okay so it and this is very common situation we have seen this lot of times with our clients that double social security has gone out and because the person has changed the jobs sometimes the software will give you that as a warning that the social security tax is higher than what it should be and if you are ignoring those warnings then that means we are losing the money on the table we need to go ahead and we need to make sure that we are claiming refund for that sometimes the software will not automatically give a refund for it 
will have to include certain form will have to like put a uh, application for refund but these are all the points that we can you know look into when we are preparing the tax return that what is happening is there a refund sometimes you will see that there is an extra refund you always go and check where is it coming from is it from withholding is it from you know uh, is it from income tax withholding or is it from over withholding of social security taxes what is it so um okay that we know contribution by the employees are not tax deductible employees get a standard deduction amount when they are doing their tax returns that okay whatever their income is say $100,000 they get a standard deduction of $25,000 so $75,000 will come up as taxable income they will not get breaks on the employee portion of social security or medicare and anybody who is hiring household employees it could be like a helpers or or nannies or babysitters or maids and all but if they are also getting paid more than 2400 during the year that means it's like 200 dollar per month we're talking about which is like anybody who will come and provide that service they'll definitely get more than that so actually the rule says that the employer or the household owner or the person who resides if they're hiring these helpers they are supposed to report that for fica taxes and make sure proper withholdings have been done there's a different form for that which is a more simplified form because we cannot expect the household employer to have all the softwares with them or or you know hire a cpa to do this kind of all well, that could be very expensive so they have they have a simplified system but the rule is that what they should know is that they are paying somebody make sure social security is withheld or the social security is being reported okay to the administration now there's something called additional medicare taxes so we saw there is a limit there is a threshold of 147000 on social security so any amount of wages that a person gets paid above 147000 will not get charged for social security but it's the other way around for medicare there is no limit on medicare okay this tax has no cap we need to understand this part rather rather what is happening if the if the wages goes above certain level which is what they have given here in this small table if you are going for merit filing status and the wages is above 250000 dollars then an extra an additional medicare tax of 0.9% will be levied and this is something which is paid only by employee employer does not pay that okay so let's read this this is also applicable on self employment income so it's applicable on compensation self employment income above the threshold amount okay withholdings by the employer at the additional rate begins at $200,000 regardless of employee filing status this is again a very very important point and especially for uh, you know tanya and heman since you guys are doing payroll always see that if the gross payroll has gone above $200,000 maybe you should start withholding additional medicare taxes of 0.9% it doesn't matter what filing status they are putting it on the on the w4 form because you may come and say right the filing status is married filing jointly so the threshold is 250000 so i am not withholding that Okay, we'll just go over some of the examples that will make it more clear. Let me just read this sentence as well. If both spouses work for the same employer, the withholding threshold is still applied on an individual basis. It's quite possible both husband and wife are working for the same employer. So actually the employer knows if their combined income is going to go above 250 or not. But for the purpose of additional Medicare taxes, we will still take the individual paycheck. Quite possible one of the spouse is earning $300,000, the other spouse is making $50,000. So the total 300, sorry, 300 plus 50 will be 350, which is above threshold amount, if you see joint income. But for one of the spouse who is earning less, who is earning only $50,000, the additional Medicare taxes will not be applied. 
okay so that's what let's see there are two different things one is that when we are running the payroll what are the rules that we are supposed to follow from employer perspective employee doesn't have any say in that if employer doesn't withhold 0.9% extra there are certain penalties on employer side they should have done it they should have withhold it from their paycheck they should have made sure that it's getting paid in time to the various authorities and all there definitely will penal will be penalties but that doesn't mean that employee gets away from it whenever employee is filing their income tax return that point of time this may get revealed that okay you should be paying extra 0.9% you have not paid because your employer has not withheld so you better pay it now the ultimate responsibility is for employee only that the payment has to go out from their paycheck but how that needs to be done that should have been done by employer so they will also get penalized for not doing it properly okay so can we have someone um hemant can you please read this example 7.3 one spouse received uh, 222k of wages and while other spouse so others, please gone. let us pay attention what it is and all so that you know we we follow this very closely and we try to make sense out of it go ahead hemant uh, one spouse received 220k of the wages while other spouse earn 25k of either w2 or net self employment income the employer of the first spouse uh, is required to withhold additional 0.9 uh, additional medicare taxes on last 20000 of taxable wages even even though if the couple will not be owed the 0.9 additional medicare taxes when they have filed their 2022 form uh, form uh, 1040 is dollar 220 uh, 220k plus 25000 is equals to 24500k which is less than 250 uh, 250 100k mutual funds threshold so excess withhold will be Applied towards on other taxes. Correct. So we have been given a threshold here that if it's very falling point, they don't have to pay additional tax if their combined income is less than two hundred k. And we are talking only about wages and self-employment income. We are not talking about interest income, rent income, capital gains income. No, none of that because this is a payroll tax or this is a self-employment tax. we are just talking about the earned income okay not passive income so what they are saying is the um, the employer it is employer's responsibility to withhold additional 0.9% because the wages are above 200000 okay additional rate begins at 200000 but when they are actually filing the tax return their income is coming their earned income is coming to be 245k which is lower than the threshold so actually they don't have to pay 0.9% extra so what happens when they file their form 1040 when they file their actual income tax return that time they'll get a refund of additional medicare taxes which employer has withheld that time they'll get a refund but that doesn't mean that employer doesn't have to withhold it okay so Yeah, so failure by the employer to withhold the additional point nine percent will it will result in employing being personally responsible for tax. However, there will be any there will be some kind of penalties on employer as well. So ultimate responsibility is for employee only. They will have to pay extra at the end of the year when they file their taxes. Or if the employer is withholding and they are actually not falling under the threshold, then employee will get refund back. Can okay. I ask a question? Sure. So that point nine will be uh, from the employer also, is it? Because the no, Medicare no, no. match, no, it's only by the for the employee. Employer doesn't pay this tax. It's okay, only yeah, for the employee. Right. Okay. Yes, I maybe they should have said it somewhere here. Wait, like let me just see. But that is not for employer. That I'm sure about.
So yeah, here. Remember that this tax only applies to employee share of Medicare taxes. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Since you are there, Tanya, can you start reading 7.5? Spouse A has 170,000 of box 5 Medicare wages listed on A's W-2. Spouse B has a K-1 from B's law firm listing box 14 self-employment income of 182,426. 170 net self-employment income. The couple will owe dollar 810 170k wages plus 170 net uh, self-employment minus 270 mfg threshold into 0.9 percent of additional medicare tax on their collective earned income okay so can you explain that i think we, we think missed 7.4 right sorry 7 point or did we miss this yeah Okay, sorry, go ahead with this then. Like, yeah, sorry. I thought this is in continuation. Okay, yeah, let's go with 7.4. MFG no. tax for each no. box by Medicare wages of 170,000 listed on their respective W 2s. Combined 340,000 of earned income will be shown on the form or schedule for calculating 0.9 uh, additional Medicare taxes. The couple will owe 0 0.9 additional Medicare taxes. Uh, of $810, that is 340 minus the 250 threshold they have and 0.9% on that, which will be included in other taxes on Schedule 2 of Form 1040. Correct. So is that clear for everybody? Otherwise, Tanya, can you explain? So uh, their combined income is $340,000. The threshold for Medicare for additional Medicare wages is uh, 250,000. So 340 minus 250, uh, that is uh, 90,000 into 0.9 percent of that. That is $810. It will come up as part of other taxes. So when we are looking into 1040, if we need to understand what is the composition of all taxes, we should click on that box called other taxes, and that will give us the breakdown of there could be investment income, net investment income tax. There could be additional Medicare taxes. There could be some other tax. So that will come to know that, OK, this 0.9 percent is coming. OK, so now I think what they're doing is they're using the same numbers and they're kind of changing it that one person still gets wages of 170,000. But uh, the spouse B also has a K-1 income. So what is happening here? The spouse A is having 170,000 of wages. OK, they're working as an employee and they're getting this much of Medicare wages. Spouse B has a K-1 from B's law firm. So that is also self-employment income. Maybe B is working as a lawyer or a paralegal or whatever, but that person is getting K-1. And this K-1 is for active income. It is not for passive income. So we need to consider that for the purpose of self-employment taxes because this is a kind of employment only. They're providing services as an employee or as an employer, a self-employment will come into the picture. So then she's, she or he is having an income of so much, 182. The net self-employment is 170,000. So one minute, let me just see why is net coming here. Yeah. So maybe this is the gross income and after expenses and all, it is coming to 170 only. So again, the couple will, what they're trying to say here is that in this example, both of them are having W-2s. In this example, one of them is having W-2, one of them is having K-1. Still, they are paying the same amount of Medicare taxes. Because 182 might be the gross K-1, then there might be some other expenses and all that is also coming on the K-1 that this is the partner share of expenses. Okay, so after that, the net income comes to 170. In calculation, we can take, okay, take 0.9% of uh, whatever is above the threshold of 250K and that will be additional Medicare taxes. 
on self employment now we will see an example no additional medicare tax on self employment so uh, honey can you start yes sir uh, spouse x has one second spouse x has uh, 170000 dollar of box 5 medicare wages listed on axis uh, w2 spouse y has a k1 from wise law firm with net self self employment income of 170000 dollars y also has a 90000 dollar loss from a startup of a new schedule c business since y's self employment income is now only 80000 dollars that is uh, 170000 dollars uh, reduced by uh, 90000 dollars so when it is added to excess uh, 170000 dollars in w2 wages the couple is not above the applicable threshold limit of uh, 250000 dollars for mfs uh, mfj tax payer therefore no additional medicare tax on their collective earned income is due so ma'am in this case uh, x uh, spouse x is having uh, 170000 dollar uh, income in w2 and uh, spouse y is having uh, given from a business where his net employment income is 170000 dollars and he is having another loss he is having loss from another business uh, which is a new schedule c business so that will let off and the uh, taxable income will be 80000 dollars and if we'll add this to spouse x's income that will uh, come up to again 2 lakh uh, 230000 dollars which is uh, lower than the minimum threshold limit which is uh, 250000 dollars so there is no requ- uh, requirement of additional medicare tax yeah so the point here to note is the self employment income is getting offset against each other self employment income and loss because these are both of them are in self employment in nature when we are talking about k1 that means the spouse y is a partner in the law firm because only partners get that k1 statement so from that law firm partnership spouse y has received income of 170000 dollars but that that person is a partner he can do any other partnerships also he or she or he can like you know they can have a schedule c as well so they also started a schedule c business which uh, which uh, which turned into a loss of 90000 so that is getting offset against each other 80 plus 170 is not crossing the it is coming to 250 it is not crossing the threshold of 250 so there is no additional medicare tax for them clear for all this yes, month yeah okay good so anyways we have seen all these things the employee portion includes an additional 0.9% if the gross pay is excess of 200000 The employer doesn't have to know what the spouse, what the employee's spouse is making or earning and all. As soon as the gross pay reaches above two hundred thousand dollar, the employer should just go ahead and withhold point nine percent extra. With regardless of what the spouse is making, and it's not like if the employer knows the spouse is having three hundred thousand dollar income. Um, the employee is having 100000 dollar income employer should not become more like you know extra cautious or take an extra step and saying that hey you guys are you know crossing 250k because your uh, your wife or your husband is earning you know whatever 300000 and you are earning 100000 so total is 400 you are crossing so let me just withhold extra 0.9% on you that's none of employer's business they just have to see what the employee is getting and just do based on that what the other spouse is making not making and all that they can figure out then when they do their final taxes if they have uh, paid less it will come up as part of other taxes and they'll have to pay at that point of time if they if the employer ended up withholding more they will also get a refund of these taxes so the responsibility is very clear for employer what they are supposed to do and employee if employee wants if employee is very much aware of their taxes they want that employer should be withholding extra they can always go and say that can you please withhold extra federal taxes whatever but they cannot go and say that can you withhold extra medicare taxes 
because medicare has to is directly connected with the gross income but federal federal withholding is not like that even if you are making 100000 dollar you can say yes do my withholding for 35% okay i don't care or do my withholding for 5% even that is fine so that is all declaration this is how the indian tax system may differ from us tax system all the declaration is given by employee to the employer on form w w4 okay they write it that what should be my withholding or if they don't know they just need to answer that okay what is your status how many people are there in your family business um, like how many dependents do you have based on those answers employer can see what should be the withholding but if the employee comes and says only withhold 500 dollar from my paycheck employer will do that okay it's employee's responsibility to make sure they are paying their taxes properly that w4 form is taken at the time when they come up as an employee and and uh, ideally we should get uh, the updated forms every year to see if there is any change in their tax status so this is why a lot of times we tell our clients that if they are, their liability is very high we tell them that go and fix your w4 tell your employer do an additional withholding of $2000 or $3000 per paycheck or per month and all because your withholdings are not enough they can just submit a new w4 form sign it and just tell the employer that please take away you know extra 500 dollar extra 2000 dollar they don't have to give any reason that this is why you need to do that because i'm having so and so losses because i'm making these investments because i'm doing 401k so my tax liability will be low or high or i'm having additional income so that's why my liability should be high none of that we don't need to collect all that information Okay, so let's go over one more example. Um, Rohit, can you please 7.7? Can you please read this? Uh, okay, see a single filer has. We need to pay attention. This person is a single filer. The threshold is going to be different for this person. See a single filer yeah. has dollar one thirty k in wages and dollar one forty five k in self employment income. C's wages are not in excess of the dollar 200k. Result for single filer. So C one is not one one Hold on, that's one minute. Hold on, let's see what is for a single person. The limit is 200,000. Fine. So his wages are not going to go above 200,000. His wages is 130. Correct. Okay. So C is not liable for the surtax on these wages. Before calculating the tax on self employment income, the dollar 200k results for single filer is reduced by C's dollar 130k in wages, resulting in a reduced self employment results of dollar 70,000k. C is liable to pay tax on dollar 75,000 of self employment income, dollar 145k minus 70,000. Correct. So, um, so the other 200,000 threshold is not applicable, so there is no additional withholding of 130,000. But if you are adding up both of them, it is coming to how much? To uh, 75,000. Right? 275, 130 plus 145. 275, again the threshold is $200,000, so it's higher than the threshold by 75,000. And so this person has to pay additional Medicare tax on $75,000. That's clear? Right? That's what they're trying to say. Okay, let's just look into this quickly. What is net investment income tax? Again, this is a kind of uh, income tax, but this is levied only on people, those who are having um, passive income, which could be interest, dividend, capital gains, Okay, any of the income coming from passive activity, this is what the name says. This is an investment income tax. So there has to be some investment income. Then, then only this tax will come into the picture. And the, the intention of the government is not to just go ahead and charge tax on each and every person in the, you know, in the U.S. What they are saying is, if you are paying, if you are making income above certain level, 
you know, then we will put extra 3.8%. So it's kind of surcharge. So again, there are certain thresholds given. Again, when we are doing, um, you know, our uh, when we are computing our taxes or when we are prepare, preparing this, sometimes you will see other taxes, you'll see extra 3.8% come up as net investment income tax, which is clear there must be some capital gain income or some passive income on, on which this extra tax will come up. If they are adjusted or modified adjusted gross income is above the threshold. Okay. So now this the next point is self-employment taxes. We have actually covered that above. This is a combination of FICA plus Medicare taxes. So we have seen that many times that if the person is an employee, they're supposed to pay FICA tax, Medicare taxes through their paycheck. But if the person is self-employed, they're running their own business or they're having consulting income or consultation and all, then that doesn't mean they don't have to pay. What IRS is saying that, okay, fine, you, you are, there's nobody there to withhold your taxes, right? No one is turning your payroll. You're getting consultation income. So no problem. That's called self-employment income. Now we're going to come up with something called self-employment tax. The taxpayer may say, what is it self-employment tax? I'm paying enough income taxes. Why are you putting extra taxes on that? So they said that, yeah, you're paying income tax. Everybody's paying income tax. But if you were an employee, you would have to pay extra FICA and um, Medicare as well. Just because you're running your own show doesn't mean you don't have to pay Social Security and Medicare because once you retire, once you get old, as a U.S. person, government will give you also Social Security benefits. If you go to hospital, you will also get Medicare. You don't have to pay anything for your medical treatment and all. These are all the facilities you will get once you pa you know you pass certain age and all. So how come people those who are on W two they will pay for your social security benefits and Medicare? That's not fair, right? It should not happen that people those who are W two they they don't have any control on their paycheck, so they are paying, and other people those who are working as a contractor or consultants they are not even running payroll for themselves so they can very easily say well i'm not paying any other payroll tax why because i'm not running payroll but when they grow old they will still take benefit of social security benefits and all so that that's not fair to to have that kind of uniformity to be fair to everybody what irs says okay there's no payroll for you we understand now there's something called self-employment tax it's going to be exact same percentage as payroll taxes so you pay that you now they're saying you pay 15.3 percent not 6.2 and 1.45 percent which is the employee paying because employer is also paying the same amount so in reality irs is getting 15.3 percent extra so now they're telling the self-employment person that you pay 15.3 percent not just 6.2 and 1.45 because you are yourself as a, you are working as an employer, you are working as an employee. Both employer and employee are in you only, right? So you pay full thing. But to be fair to you, what we'll allow you is, we will allow you to take, you, we will allow you to take a deduction for, uh, you know, 7.65%. 6 6.2 plus 1.45. So we will allow you, you take a deduction for that. You reduce your taxable income by so much because if you were an employer, you know, we would have given you a benefit for this expense that you can write off from your p &L and not pay any taxes on it. So that is called self-employment taxes. And net earnings from self-employment is going to be after reducing that 0.7, I mean, sorry, your 7.65%, which they are allowed to take as a deduction. Now, are we doing everything on paper and pen and all? Obviously, no. The moment we put that as Schedule C income, the moment we put that as K1 income, the moment we put any income as a self-employment income, automatically the software will compute all those self-employment taxes. So a lot of times we see that the okay the income of that person is even below standard deduction. The standard deduction says twenty thousand. You are making only ten thousand. Still you are paying taxes. 
How is that possible? Then we run the numbers and we say, well, 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 that is not income tax. That is actually self-employment tax. And that will come up no matter what. This is again more important for our clients in India because they are doing their, uh, their like, you know, running a consulting shop in India. Because they are US citizen, they have to report that consulting income in US. Even though their the income is so less, they're not probably not paying taxes in India and all, but and and they'll probably not be required to pay income taxes in US as well, but self-employment taxes will come up even for them. We have a lot of clients with that kind of example, and uh, we that's why we keep advising them that structure it in a different way. Don't take income as a consultant and all. Maybe maybe come up with a company, maybe you know, do some other structuring or run payroll for yourself. Okay, because if you're running payroll for yourself in any country outside US, then payroll taxes will not come up. Because there's no W2 which is being issued. Okay, then there are certain other rules, the, you know, the FICA tax, social security, they're kind of different for ministers, ministers meaning clergy and all those who are working in uh, temples or or churches, mosques, and all those things. So they are getting some special, uh, you know, reliefs. So they may not have to pay the kind of social security and other taxes which a uh, normal taxpayer would pay. Let's just close our tail here. So now there's something called FUTA taxes. Again, this is very, very important. This again, FUTA stands for unemployment. This tax is on employers. An employee doesn't pay this. In case the employee loses the job, this is what it's called, unemployment. If the employee loses the job, they can go to the federal government. They can go to the state government and say that, you know, can I get some insurance benefit? So uh, this tax is only, there's a limit on that. It cannot be more than 6% of the first 7,000 of wages. Okay, but then there are certain credits also that they can get because if, that the person is staying in California, he's also paying California state unemployment tax. And on top of that, also paying federal, then there is a relief given to them that, okay, you take credit of the taxes paid in state. So it may happen that they just end up paying the difference of these two, 6.0% less 5.4. So only 0.6% of 7,000 may come up as future taxes, which would only be $42. If we take 6%, it will come to $420. So again, this is what we need to re remember right now. We don't need to like, you know, uh, we don't need to memorize all these things. What we need to know is there's something called future tax. What is the limit? How to calculate all that thing? We can learn about that later as well. Then household employee taxes. If we have an employee working in a house as a nanny, babysitter, whatever, you know, this again, we have to, if the cash wages are more than 2,400, future taxes may be applicable or maybe just 1,000. It will be applicable. FICA will be applicable. That means social security will be applicable more than 2,400. So again, these people, like a lot of, and this is very common, people with small kids, they will hire help, like say $500 per month, they'll pay $1,000 per month, they'll pay that come and take care of the houses while both husband and wife are busy working. They don't know about these rules because they are not the real employer. They're not running a business. They don't know. Nobody has told them, but this is what I say you should be knowing. So this becomes their responsibility. They have to get a tax ID number. They have to get a EIN number. They have to run payroll for themselves, uh, for their helpers, and make sure they are reporting it to IRS. Okay, so how about can we spend like a couple more minutes and just finish this as well? Or if it's getting too much, we'll just stop here. Any comments? Anyone? Anurag, Sakshi, what do you guys think? Apurva, Ayush? No, ma'am. Okay, what we'll do is we'll stop here.
because we have of these uh, different kind of taxes. So we'll just stop here and we'll continue from home by our credit prepayment. I just wanted to go over the FPAR and all these things because this is an easy part, but maybe not for everybody because not everyone might be knowing what is FPAR and all. So we'll just spend some more time tomorrow only. Okay. So what all taxes we have seen? We have seen uh, QTA tax, Q which is an unemployment tax. Employment. We have seen self-employment taxes, which is not for employees, only for self-employed people. We have seen net investment tax, which is like an extra tax on passive income. And we have seen Medicare, tax, Medicare and Social Security.